Hello, my name is Michelle Wodan. You are currently viewing the home of John W. Mackey, the Silver King whose name is present all around the University of Nevada, Reno's campus. John William Mackey was one of the wealthiest men in the world during the late 1800s and was known to be a generous person. He helped to build cables that stretched across oceans, making worldwide communication cheaper. Mackey is relevant to the Truckee River watershed because of the location where he first gained his unfathomable riches. Mackey owned mines in Virginia City, just east of Lake Tahoe and southeast of Donner Pass. Virginia City would become the city known as one of the richest places due to the mining successes there, not just of Mackey, but of his partners and other miners as well. He was born in Dublin, Ireland. His family emigrated to the United States when Mackey was still young, but he brought with him a brogue as well as a stutter. Mackey's father died shortly after their arrival, and Mackey left school to get a job in order to support his mother and sister financially. Mackey's speech characteristics made it difficult for him to get a job later in life. Mackey was considered the ideal gentleman. He was generous in his money, even when he didn't have too much to spare. He was polite and thoughtful, barely speaking before thinking. However, there were times when Mackey would lose his temper, which was unfortunate for whoever had angered him, as he had practiced boxing throughout his life. However, he was tame a great majority of the time. Virginia City became interesting to miners when the Comstock Lode was discovered by two Irishmen. When Mackey first arrived in Virginia City, there were no buildings. Locations of those buildings, once the town began to thrive, were secondary to the locations of the mines, resulting in steep, narrow streets on the hillside, reached by windy roads from the valley floor. The winter Mackey lived there was brutal, and the miners had dug holes in the mountainside to live in. They had little more than jackets to keep them warm against the howling winds that were common to the area. The men had run out of food, but fortunately, a caravan filled with it was able to make it over the pass before they all starved to death. Mackey decided to move west. The Comstock load had not yet been discovered. He was skilled in timber work from an internship that he was fortunate enough to acquire back east, where Irish Catholics were discriminated against. This timber work was primarily used for shipbuilding and helped him to develop the mines he would own later on in his mining career. A great deal of the matter extracted from the mines was ore. Ore is a type of rock that frequently contains other minerals, including valuable ones. Ore was extracted from mines using manual labor and was then processed for the valuable silver and gold by mills. A struggle miners and mine owners constantly faced was the flooding of mines and the threat of underground fires. Mackey worked in the Mexican mines, so named because the owners of the mine were Hispanic. They recognized that he was a hard worker, and it is rumored that Mackey was paid much higher wages than other workers due to his hardworking nature. He would wake up at four every morning to begin his day, and at nights he would study the things he never learned in school. Mackey had found great success in the Kentuck mine. He met James Fair and became business partners with the man. The pair later partnered with Flood and O'Brien, and Mackey and his partners decided to purchase the Consolidated Virginia and C California mines. These mines were thought to be relatively barren, but James Fair had a feeling that the small thread of silver he followed would become something much bigger. The Consolidated Virginia and California mines would be the most productive mines in history, eventually producing what would be trillions of dollars worth of silver and gold today. Stocks rose incredibly, when they first started to produce significant worth, and soon Mackey, Fair, Flood, and O'Brien were millionaires. Mackey met his wife Louise through the fairs. When Teresa Fair invited the widowed Louise and her daughter Eva to their home for Christmas Eve, and James Fair invited Mackey, the two fell in love and were married in 1867. Though their relationship was unique, while John shied away from the spotlight, Louise tried the best she could to be in it. Louise was very concerned with social elitism and eventually made her way into the social elite in Europe. It took her many years, and she went to Paris after being rejected by the upper class in New York. She and Mackey lived apart for a great deal of their married life, but were still affectionate towards one another, as evidenced by Mackey's letters to Louise. Mackey Mansion is a large home in Virginia City that John Mackey had purchased from the owner of another mine. The mansion houses a $10,000 toilet as well as a table where such prominent figures as Mark Twain and former President Ulysses S. Grant have sat. The home is three stories and is said to be haunted. It is available for tours and event venues. Mackey had two children with Louise, as well as her daughter Eva. Mackey's eldest son was tragically killed in a steeplechase accident, putting both Mackey and Louise into a long depression. Louise even resisted socializing for two years. Eva would go on to marry a prince from Italy, 
and Clarence married and had children of his own, he would continue his father's projects in telecommunications. Mackey's generosity was largely towards the Catholic Church. While he, like many other Irish gentlemen, was not known to attend church, he donated significant sums to the church in Virginia City, St. Mary's. After a fire destroyed a great deal of Virginia City, including the church, Mackey told the pastor, Father Minogue, that he could take as much money as he needed for the church. While many believe that the money given to UNR was donated by Mackey, this is a misconception. The donor was his son, Clarence, who gave great sums of money to the university over the course of his life. Unfortunately, he lost millions when the market crashed in the 1920s, but was still generous towards the university. Louise Mackey was also generous to the institution and felt that she owed her socialite lifestyle to the state of Nevada, which had brought her husband so much wealth. She was also known, like Mackey himself, to be fond of art and frequently sponsored struggling artists. Mackey was fond of theater in particular. A statue of John Mackey stands in front of the quad at UNR. The statue was created by Gutzum Borglum, who would carve the faces of presidents into Mount Rushmore later in his career. The statue was made after Mackey's death, and the body of the current mayor of Reno was used as a model, although the face was modeled after Mackey. Thank you for watching this presentation. My sources are listed here and include an interview with Ronald James, who I would like to acknowledge and thank for his valuable input. I would also like to thank the De La Mar and Matthewson IGT Knowledge Center libraries for the sources I was able to find there.